It's a weird one, isn't it? So when Guzzi took over, Quinns were in a really bad place. They were finished, I think they were 10th in the league or something. He's taken over, got them up to fifth in the first year and then sixth in the second year. Um, you know, got them to a final. So there looks like progression. There needed to be some sort of broom taken through that club to get rid of some of the older players. And and a coach like Guzzi needed time for that. But actually, you know, people are looking at this as Paul Gustav has been sacked by Harlequins. And that's the kind of headlines that have come out. You know, and uh, you know, I might come on to the CEO in a minute about around what he said. But doing my research and speaking to some of my sources, uh, Guzzi was offered a contract extension by Harlequins that he wasn't happy signing. Um, and they'd obviously put a contract on the table. His contract was running out at the end of the season. He hadn't signed it yet because he wanted a few things to change at the club. Um, and what do you mean? What, what do you mean? He wanted his... Danny Kerr. What do you mean? I didn't say that. Oh, did you not? Um, Sorry, I thought you did. Just, would you put your no, name to that no. or not? Will you put your name to that? No, okay. no, I wouldn't. But what I, will, okay. what I will say is when some of the players got wind of the fact that Guzzi hadn't signed his deal yet, um, and uh, Laurie Darrenpool, the, the CEO, some of the Quinns players had a few... Sorry, some of the Quinns players had clandestine meetings with the CEO. What was that word? Clandestine. That sounds... Something gendery. I don't know what. Something what? Gendery. Gendery. No, 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 no. Just in secret. Kind of. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so they, some of the players went to, and I won't name names, but some of the senior Quinns players. Who do you think it might have been if they're senior players? I, I don't know, James. Let's guess. Know. We can guess. Yeah. Who just are the put, senior players in Quinns? Just, just put your name to some. Give us. I don't, I, I don't know, but it could be the fact that some of the senior players, like a Mike Brown, who could be leaving the club, or like a, a Danny Care, who signed a contract extension, um, and a Chris Robshaw just went back in just to have them chat. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, had some clandestine meetings with uh, Laurie Darrenpool, and they kind of said, you know, because he's trying to change things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, from what I'm hearing. They got wind of Guzzi not signing his contract yet, and then they kind of ushered it along and forced the situation where Guzzi has now got somewhere else he wants to go to, <clears throat> and they realised that actually, if Guzzi wasn't going to sign his contract, the players, some of them started voicing their opinions because they didn't think he'd be here in the long run. They've just got rid of him um, and cut ties pretty quickly. And it, I suppose it's similar to the Jordan Murphy scenario where Jordan's gone to the board and said... I'm out of contract at the end of the year. Are you going to extend my deal? The board have said that Leicester have said no. So he's like, well, what's the point of me being there? But it's a flip reverse of that. So <laughs> the club have offered Guzzi a contract and he's not signing it um, because he's obviously looking at their options. He's negotiating stuff. There's problems at the club that he wants to change. Um, and the board weren't allowing those things to happen. And then players get wind of it, gone behind his back a little bit from what I hear to the CEO. And what I, what I struggle with is, and this is Quinn's down to a T for me, um, you know, they won the league in 2012 and people have got this impression of Quinn's that it's, a, you know, their the culture, whatever, whatever. Who knows what their culture is unless you've been in there. But the CEO, Laurie Darrenpool, comes out and says individual suit. The CEO, Laurie Darrenpool, has come out and said individuals suit certain environments and the club has taken time to reflect on the way that they want to live and operate and create the identity and culture that is, res that is reflective of us as a club. And they say that Paul Gustav doesn't suit that. What is Quinn's culture? Because Guzzi was trying to change from the old to a new club. Um, and I don't get what their culture is. What do they think? They've got a winning mentality? They've won nothing. They've won one league. No, they're sponsored by Adidas. How cool is that? That you've well, got Adidas cool. kit. I mean, cool. that's great. They've got Adidas kit. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you look at Quinn. What Guzzi's done is he has improved that club. You know, he's a friend of ours. You know, you've been coached by him, Jim. You, he was at Saracens when you were there, was he or not? Yeah. So you've been coached by him, Jim. I played with him, good mate. Um, and you look at it, and we've always, you know, you've given a bit of stick to Queens over time, haven't you? Because of the whole Saracens thing from back in the day. Uh, and I'm just honest. And he took the club forward, but there's people at that club holding that club back, I think. Who, 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 who do you think? Senior players? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you've got to move on. You've got to have a. Fresh broom. Look at Toulouse, right? Toulouse had a load of old players. Uh, the coach took a broom, got rid of some of the old boys, bought in some and bought through some of the young lads, which because he was trying to do Toulouse a few years down the track, win the top 14. 
and effectively, you know, rugby and, and sport is cyclical, isn't it? So you have to regenerate your squad. You know, Leicester for years had the best squad and were always in the final, around the final. Then they changed their whole emphasis around how they recruit and what their recruitment looks like and who does their recruitment. And they've been shit for years. And I hate to say that because it's a club of mine, but we've always said it's the recruitment. So there's a lot of times when if you're the DOR, you need to be given complete autonomy on, you know, trying to implement your plan. And I don't think that happened with Guzzi at Quinns. I don't think he was given complete autonomy. And by all accounts, some clandestine meetings by the players uh, and some senior players um, have led to Guzzi leaving early. And to be fair to Guzzi, I don't think he wanted to stay there anyway because he's got a more exciting option that will Where? Uh, be announced in due course, James. What do you reckon? Wales? There's rumours of Wales. There's rumours of abroad. There's rumours in the Premiership. Um I believe something may come out later in the week. There we go. Well, you, know, you know, just let us know. If you're not going to let me know, let the millions know. <laughs> give, them, give them what they want. I'm going to say Bath. I'm just going to throw something out there. I don't know why I'm saying Bath, but... Hey, Bath. There you go. You're saying Guzzi to Bath. Who knows? Are you going to put your name to that, Jim? I'm not putting my name to that one, no. But what are your thoughts on it, though, Jim? Because ultimately... You know, you, you're not scared of getting stuck into Quinns for whatever reason. Obviously, I make a few jokes and remarks about Quinns. Some of it's tongue-in-cheek tongue and some of it's not. I, th I, I just think sometimes the way that they conduct themselves on the pitch, and there's a bit of drama off the pitch that follows them, isn't there? Like, there is. And is it, I'm sat here saying that with all the drama that happened at Saracens, and I stuck up for it. But not that that's everything. I think Guzzi's a brilliant coach. I was very surprised when he took the Quinns job. Really surprised just because of what he stands for and what the history of what you'd hear about Quinns and having played against Quinns for Saracens. But there's always drama there, isn't there? There's all, there just seems to be something not quite right. They have big performances, big wins, and then they go away and get hammered. And that's year on year, regardless of what coach they've got. So the CEO, I think, it's a real shame to come out with them comments as well about a coach like Gustav, because effectively you read in between the lines that he didn't fit the culture. It's like Goody said, well, who's defining the culture? If, if Guzzi didn't fit the culture and he's the head coach, say I've signed Alex Anderson to bring a culture with him. Paul Gustav brings his culture to the club. So, And he's been very successful as a coach, Guzzi, hasn't he? If you look at well, his time at Saracens, his time with England. There you go, time, exactly. You know, winning uh, down in Australia and all that stuff. He knows how to win trophies. Exactly. So that's it. Like the proofs to put in, in the record... Like he changed Saracen's DNA with the defence and everything he built around that, the way that he delivers to the team. England, like Goody said, you look at his results with that. In a hard environment, working with Eddie Jones, coaching, they'll all say that. We can see with the turnover. So just going back to it, I was very surprised that he ended up at Quinns. And you look at the, the makeup of that team and it looked like he was starting to implement some things and make some tough decisions. Nick Easter obviously got rid of him because he was coaching the defence. Nick's now at Newcastle doing really well. Um, you've got other old guard in there. You've got Nick Evans, who is a, was a brilliant player and a brilliant coach, seemingly. They lost Sean Long, didn't they? Yeah, he left. Yeah, yeah. Days, he? Losing Sean Long was, was a, a big thing for the club. The whole thing around Rob Shaw and everything that he brought to the club. For me, James Horwell was a big loss for them. In the second row, everything that he brought, I thought he was a wicked premiership player. He was fantastic. You've got Marcus Smith, a young 10, coming through. You've got a bit of drama that follows Joe Marler on and off the pitch, and you've got to deal with that. Danny Kerr, how much of a voice does he have? You bring in Chris Ashton to the mix as well with everything that comes with Ashy. Just signed for Worcester, we've just seen that as well. And he, and he, yeah, he's gone today. Yeah, so... I don't know, just a weird club. They just seem like they seem like they've got everything. You've got a little stadium next to Twickenham, great demographic of rugby players, you know, your stereotypical Englishman playing at the club. English internationals have been through the club and playing at the club, but something's not quite right. For, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And that's but... the thing though, what when the CEO's saying about their culture, what is their culture? What you know, I, that's what I don't get. Is their culture what they're dying off from winning the Premiership in 2012 or whenever it was? That's a long time ago. Do you know what I mean? I, I just, it's hard. You, you can identify with certain clubs' cultures and how they perform. Um, and I think they were starting to find their way and find their feet under Guzzi. He's no doubt improved them, but 
who knows? Who'd take that job? Oh, some, uh, someone that needs it. Well, that's the, that, that, yeah, that's the thing with the coaches. And again, asking Alex Anderson, what, what is success? So how, how do you look at success? Is it winning things? Is it consistently being in the top four? Is it being in the, the last stages of Europe? Is it developing England internationals? Like, what is the definition of success in the Premiership? It's a really difficult one, isn't it? Because you, you look at it, it's like, if you were to say Quinns was, were a successful team, they've not won the Prem since 2012. So what are you looking for from them? To be consistently in the top four? To be in the top yeah. six? But then you look at their squad of players and it's like, well, really, they've not got a squad that says that that should be the case. Mm. So he finished, fifth, he finished fifth and sixth with them in his two yeah. years, didn't he? I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah, obviously a bit of movement. And with Jim there, it'd be interesting to see what happens. But it's like anything. I'm telling you now, Alex Anderson's going to sail and he will have autonomy on how he wants the culture to run, how he wants the club to be and what it represents, right? And time. So, yeah. You need a bit of time as well because, like, you don't just come in and start firing people and saying, Rob Shaw, I'm getting rid of you, Marla, I'm getting rid of you. I know you re-signed Marla. Danny Kerr's just signed a two-year deal. It takes time, right? It takes... Look at Saracen's story, their journey that they went on. Look at Exeter's. Look at Bristol's. You know, it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. So, like, these clubs like Leicester, big clubs like Quinn's, you know, your Baths and stuff like that, you know, Bath, arguably, are underperforming. Massively. Year on year with the squad of players that they've got. It's not easy. So, it's like what you say is success. So, clearly something's not right there. You know, maybe the way that Guzzi spoke, spoke after games and he put a lot of it on the players. He did. Like, it, it was right some of the time. So, who knows? Again, 